Hi guys, I am back from my Camino. Uh, I've been back for about a week and a half and just kind of coming back down to the reality of my life here in Florida now. And um, while it's still fresh in my mind, I wanted to do a video of the things that I brought with me and show you what worked and what didn't for those of you that are interested that might want to take a trek someday or doing this. So um, I'm not an expert. I'm not claiming to know anything, but I'm just wanting to pass on things that worked for me that made my life easier and those things that didn't. So it might, it might be useful to you. Um, when I left, I had three wonderful sponsors that believe in women and thought what I was doing was kind of cool and gifted me their beautiful products. The first one was Deuter and they gifted me this beautiful backpack. This is a 36 liter and it's a, an SL uh, Pro, a Futura Pro, and it was absolutely perfect. The waist, the shoulders, the pockets, the, the weight of it, the support of it was absolutely perfect. I thought that the size was great. Um, I wouldn't go bigger or smaller. It was the absolute perfect size and fit, and it, it fits for a woman, so it's slim line and the hip belt moves with you and towards the end it literally felt like it was a part of me i mean this thing is now my friend and so i would suggest a 36 liter and what i'm talking about is the camino francaise that's what i just finished the 500 miles but you don't really have to go bigger than that and you could probably even go smaller i learned that i packed far too much. I thought I was packing light. I packed history books and I packed makeup and I packed all this other stuff that I really didn't need. And so I would suggest pack light. Number one, pack light. There's a lot of things you don't need and there's a lot of things you can get on the way that you don't have to pack with you. The next most important thing is my feet. Your feet are absolutely everything on this trek. If your feet are in bad shape, even if your body is 100%, you're not going anywhere. So you have got to train your feet, take care of your feet, and listen to your feet in order to make it for the long distance. So Kuru shoes, uh, I was a big fan and am a big fan of Kuru shoes. And I reached out to them. Um, I had gone last year on a trek and thanked them because they were so comfortable. Kurus are known for their plantar fasciitis, the heel and um, it has extra padding and, and to me it's just this beautiful soft pillow and I love them. For this trek for 500 miles, it got me through, I reached my destination, but these particular ones, these chicans, they're not really designed for long distances like what I did. When I look them up, they're actually for light day hikes. They even say that on there. So I chose these for the heel, for the, the padding in the heel, but had I do it over again, I would still use Kuru's, but maybe not for the long distance. I would probably do more research and do a, a shoe that has more stability for the long haul. It did wonderful. I love them. I will continue using them, but the, the heels did wear out. Um, and they were still, like I still adore them and I have another pair that I wear on a daily basis, but those are wonderful. What you do need to do is get your boots or shoes. I wanted a boot because I wanted support on my ankles because there's a lot of rocks and stuff that you do go through, but that's your choice. You know, I saw people that were in Tevas that were sandals that they used, but one of the things that you need to do that would help, was helpful to me is at the end of the day, take your boots or your shoes off and take your shower. And then if you want to go explore, you need a second pair, something that's fresh and light, whether it's a sandal or something. So what I choose, chose for that was a hoka. I chose these, are, I think they're called one. And these are super lightweight. They have a lot of padding in the heel and they're just dreamy like a pillow. Um, and so my thought was that I would use these for the meseta, but what happened for me was my feet swelled so much on the meseta, these wouldn't even fit me. And so think of that, if you are getting a second pair, get them a whole size bigger so that when your feet swell, you can still wear those. So hokas were another one that were wonderful. The other really important one that I loved was Armaskin. Armaskin is a company based out of Australia. They have designed a state-of-the-art liner and it's called Armaskin. It has a silicone lining on the inside of this sock and on the outside it's a silky material with the seams. And let me tell you, these socks 
saved me from multiple, I mean, horrible blisters that everyone around me was suffering from. Um, they are hardy, nothing ripped, nothing tore, nothing, there is no hole in anything. These, I wore these uh, pretty much every day. I was given three pair from Armaskin as a gift, and I, I have very wide feet, and so I ended up stretching this pair out enough that they felt comfortable, but they still hugged my feet, whereas because my feet were so wide, the other two were too tight. So that's another thing I would suggest is maybe getting a couple pair that are a little bigger. But the Armaskins saved me from so many blisters. Uh, the only time that I did get blisters was on the Maseta, and that was not because of these. It was because my feet swelled so much they were overlapping. My toes, the toenails were pushing in, and you know, it was a different ball game. But So these are a game changer. I would suggest anybody going, try them out beforehand. Armaskin, li uh, Armaskin liners. You put this on first. You basically roll it on your foot, and let me just show you the inside. It's kind of a stretchy silicone, so it doesn't move around. It almost is like, in a way, a skin on your skin. And then you wear what I did is as a compression sock. These are pro compressions, and I had two pair of these. I just switched them out every other day. I'd wash the pair that was dirty and wear the other. These were wonderful. A compression sock um, helps get that circulation and so all your blood doesn't pool and, and fatigue you and hurt. So these were wonderful and they're still really tight and hold your, your calf real tight. So I would suggest an Armaskin liner and then um, two pair of the Pro Compression socks. And that's what I did, it was wonderful. The other thing that I used that is not mandatory. People chose to do sticks, no sticks, one stick, two sticks. Um, I read about it and I read that if you use walking sticks, um, that it could take 25% of the weight off of your back and knees as you're going up and down the hills. And on the Camino, there's a lot of that. There's, you know, the Meseta has the five days of flat, but it also was helpful for me for rhythm when I was on the Meseta. So what I did, because I'm in America and they say you can't fly with them, I purchased a pair of walking sticks in France. They have sports stores there that you can get things, all kinds of things. But I purchased these here. These are a French brand called, uh, they're a carbon, it's called Guide, Guidetti. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But they're very lightweight, it's carbon. Um, they have the little rubber stoppers that I, I went through, three pair of the rubber stoppers on the end. They fold up real small and lightweight. When I came back to America, I wanted to bring these and I put them in a box and just shipped them back with me in the carry-on, I mean in the, the, the baggage part. But, it, you know, my thought was uh, it's just more to haul, it's extra things, it's more things that you have to deal with, and so I was not a fan thinking of it, but when I went over there, I thought, worst case, case scenario, I get a pair and I don't like them, I donate them. But I ended up loving them. They push you up the hill. These helped me get up the hill. They saved me from falling when I was going down a hill, when it was wet and there was rocks and my knees were, and legs were tired. These saved me from many falls. So I would suggest try out a pair of walking sticks. Um, and I think it was a game changer, absolutely for me. Even on the flat parts, I used these for rhythm and just to push me forward when I was tired. Um, the other thing is some people use one stick and uh, that worked great for them. The girl that I was walking with in the end, she only had one stick and loved it. So check out walking sticks, not mandatory, just an idea to think about. Uh, the other thing that I did before I left is I wanted easy access. I didn't want to have to be taking my backpack to get into things. And so I sewed a little pocket that uh, went onto the, the belly strap of my backpack to put my money and my passport in. And on the other side, I custom made a phone holder because I didn't want to lose either of those items. So I was all proud of myself, you know, it slid onto the belt. But I got to Paris and I remember getting off the airplane and kind of putting it on one shoulder, getting out. And I went to strap and my, my little thing that I made slipped right off and was on the floor. It had my passport and money on it. So I knew right away that's not going to work. So the first thing I did when I got to St. Jean in that sports store is I saw that they had this belly bag there. Now my girls 
you know, a belly bag is not attractive. It's laughable, right? But over there, it doesn't matter about how you look. It's convenience. So what I did is I would put this belly bag on and look at what it has for convenience. You need water. If you don't have something around your waist, you have to try and reach back in your backpack for water. Or if you have, you know, the, uh, the bladder, a lot of times that leaks. Or if, it, if it's empty, you have to take everything out and refill fill it. It's a kind of a hassle. Sometimes it gets moldy. So I didn't want a bladder. So I wanted easy access and safety. So this belly bag was one of my favorite purchases. Totally lightweight. The brand is Elements. Um, and I don't, you know, that might be a French line, I don't know, but any lightweight belly bag. It has two holders for drinks right here that were easy access. It had right here in this pocket, I put my, my euros, my credit card, and my passport to stamp, my uh, pilgrim's passport. And then on the inside, I put munchies and I put my, uh, my book. This is how I, this was my John Briarly book. It got all chewed up, but this was something that I used daily. And a lot of people chose not to take a book. They would use their app for that, which I also use, the Wise Pilgrim app to get around. But I had this book in my, my pack, um, everything I needed right here, munchies. I never had to take my backpack off. So think about getting a back or getting a belly bag and uh, even, you know, when I signed into places, I could lock my pack up, take out the, you know, important papers, put it in here, and just travel real light with this around the city. Um, so I would really highly suggest this, any, be any belly bag. The other thing that I bought in France, realizing that I needed, was kind of a day pack, a small day pack. And I went with this Osprey. It's just real small. Gosh, it weighs about uh, two ounces. And it has kind of padded shoulder straps and it has a little pocket up here everything you know you can hook it together so this is where if i went into a city and wanted to go explore without my backpack this was super uh, handy and anyways i would suggest getting a small lightweight backpack too uh you know if you're going all the way through and you're going through galicia and even sometimes even before it might rain and so you have to be prepared for that with my, uh, with my um, Deuter backpack, it comes on the bottom with a pack cover for rain, and then you would have to get your own thing. And I didn't want to have the straps wet and get wet in between my back and me. And so I went and purchased this piece of equipment, which is, uh, it goes over you, it's all one piece, it goes over you and your backpack, and then it has straps to actually hold you know, go around the backpack so it's not flying all over. So I'll give you in the links all these things I'm using. Underneath, I'll give you the links to them. But this thing was amazing. Lightweight, had a visor that went out so rain didn't get in my face. And uh, let me just show it to you, what it looks like. It's enormous, but it, it would hook on. The wonderful thing about this is it would hook onto the backpack. You put it on your backpack first put your backpack on, and then you can slide your arms in. If the rain stops, you just slide your arms out and kind of pull the hat off, and it's still covering your pack and drying. So it's a wonderful piece, and I'll give you the link to that. So let's talk about the clothes that I wore. Um, I only brought two of everything, and uh, on my Camino, I got bed bugs, and so I ended up throwing a set of things away. I just didn't want to deal with them. I went to uh, the sports store, I think it was Lagronia, I can't remember what city, but I went to the sports store there and re-bought a shirt and a pair of pants. Everything I wore was Columbia because they're thin, they protect you from the sun, and they dry really fast. So I just had a pair of, these are called On the Shield uh, pants. They're really thin, they roll up nice and light. And this was another pair that I bought over there. Gosh, they, they dry in minutes, it seems. Really lightweight. And then just another little shirt. This is all I could find over there. I actually came with different shirts, but they're just real lightweight. They dry real, real quick. So uh, for me, Columbia clothes were the winner. Uh, I also had buffs around my neck because depending on when you go, well, just for you watching this, I went from September, mid-September to um, October 23rd. So I went during the, the fall and I was planning on 
from, you know, I don't know, maybe 70 to 30 degrees. And so that's what I dressed for. But what happened was, is we had a very, you know, record-breaking heat over in Spain. And in fact, two weeks before I left, there were two men that died of heat stroke on the Meseta. And it was really a big issue. It was like 100 and some degrees out there. So I sent a lot of my things forward to Santiago, a lot of my cold weather things. But um, I, I had these buffs. That's the, literally the name of them. They're, it's the buff brand. And I would put those around my neck. I don't know where they are. Um, but yeah, here they are. But the buffs uh, did two things. It protected me from the, the sun, but it also, it, when it got cold, it protected my ears from the cold. And also at night, I would put them, I would put uh, some doTERRA oil, essential oils like peppermint around the thing, pull it up, and then I didn't have to smell people when I was in the albergues. But these were a lifesaver. Um, I would wear them sometimes when I had my headlamp on, it would protect from the headlamp pushing into my forehead. So it's just a piece of tubing basically that stretches and it protects you from the sun and it's, it's really a wonderful thing. Um, so I would suggest getting a couple of those as well and then I would just wash those. So let's talk about, oh, the other thing, this is just not a, you know, a mandatory thing, but just an idea for you going in the cooler weather. I brought this scarf because it is very thin and lightweight and soft, but it has multiple use. And that's what you want to think about. Anything you bring, you want it to do at least two things if you can, you know, so that it's less things you have to bring. This scarf is, I don't know, it's this long, okay? And um, you can use it around your neck as a hat, as a pillow, as a skirt. As a cover, when you're going in the bathroom, you can hang it. If you're in the lower bunk bed, you can hang it to have some privacy. So I would suggest a scarf as well. Um, that was a wonderful thing. And a hat. I think any time of the year, and I don't know, maybe when it's snowing, you don't need it. But a sun hat is something that I would suggest to everybody. Um, you know, you're out in the beating sun. Even if it's not hot, you're still getting those rays. And, um, you know, day after day, you're going to damage your skin. And it also protects you from just the heat. So I would suggest a, a lightweight. Um, the brand of this is San Diego Hat Company. And they fold up. I've had this hat 10 years. I live in Florida. It's protected me. And it's, you can see how it's faded. And look at the inside. You know, so it has absorbed a lot of the sun and protected me. So I would suggest a sun hat. The other thing that I brought last minute, I was thinking, um, you know, when you're walking, all of that blood is just going down in your fingers and your hands. And I already have, um, I'm an artist, and so I already have like, uh, my hands are used a lot and I have veins that are very big. And so I didn't want them to hurt. And so I went to a drugstore and I bought compression gloves. These are a brand called iMac. I-M-A-K, and it's a, it's a compression glove, and the fingertips are missing, which I love. And so I just wore these every day, and also it protected the, top, the, the palms of my hands. Um, I did get blisters even with them going down some of the hills because I was putting weight because I had missed a toenail. So I was really using them, and then I got blisters. But these kept my hands warm when it was cold, but it also protected my hands from you know, just the wear and tear of the, uh, the walking sticks. So compression gloves helped with, you know, circulation. Um, if you do what I did, I wanted to beat the sun. And so I would leave early in the morning. I would get up at 5. I would be out the door by 5.30. I would always go with friends so I wouldn't get lost, even though I had a GPS. Um, but I felt more comfortable doing that. And I would wear a headlamp. I got this over there at one of the sports stores. You can get anything. But I have one that I love because it tilts. It pulls off and it tilts so you have full control. And then this slides back and forth for how wide it is. And then the, the battery pack in back also has more power or less power. So get a good headlamp if you plan on going out in the morning or even at night or even in the albergue if it's early and you need to see you can turn it on real low without blasting with your phone people won't like you if you do that so headlamp so um, i went like i said september october when it was kind of cold 
and I had this really thin, I didn't want to take down because when down gets wet it's not warm, but I had what's called a, um, I, I, what is it called again? The thermal ball, it's called, and this is a North Face. I'm a North Face fan. Lightweight, super lightweight, and the thing with this, even though it's not down, you can put it on whatever temperature it is, and it will e it'll keep you at a steady temperature. You don't get overheated and you don't get cold. So I wore this all the time, just a little thin North Face jacket, and it packs up light. Um, at night, so let's talk about night sleeping. Uh, you know, you all have heard about bed bugs, and so you've read probably about the silk sacks and silk shirts and stuff, and the, the bed bugs can't bite through it because it's such fine little, little uh, so, uh, what do you call it, so many layers of the scene. I don't even know what I'm saying. Anyways, it's really thin, and they can't bite through it. So what I got before I left is a little silk shirt that I slept in, and um, it was really wonderful, and it's soft, it dries easy, it's clean, wonderful. I wore that every night. And then I also had this silk sack, and this is something that I slept in every night too. I'll take it out. So it comes in this little bag, and then I sewed this white thing on there. This is a pillowcase that I thought maybe I could put my my jacket in as a pillow or if I had you know things I didn't want people to steal I could put them in there but which never happened it wasn't an issue but the silk sack is really super thin it's very wide plenty of room in there and it dries easy when you wash it real easy and nice um, the, the reason why I got bed bugs is I was in an albergue one night on the top bunk and uh, they give you a little paper cover like a little I don't know, it never stays on, but like a little paper top mattress cover, and it didn't stay on. I had my silk sack, I had my silk shirt, but it was so hot in the albergue, and they had the, the windows closed, and it was just humid and hot in there. I couldn't stay in my silk sack. It doesn't breathe. And so I laid on top of it, pulled my shirt up, and during the night I had rolled over directly onto this mattress, just a plain mattress. Everything else was on the floor. And when I headed out, to hike that day, about an hour into it is when it, it affected me. My feet were itching, my back, my everything. So do everything you can, you know. And I thought that I checked for bed bugs. I didn't. I, I just kind of glanced and just went on with my day. But um, really be proactive. It does happen out there, and uh, it's, it's a horrible thing. So silk, wear those if you'd like. One thing that I did in my backpack is compartmentalize. You know, I had my clothes in one thing, my, my sock things in a bag. I put them in these little individual bags. Um, I titled them, but I ended up not using the bag with the name on it. I just, whatever would shove in there, I would put those there. And so that kind of compartmentalizes and organizes the things. Okay, so when you go to the, the, the albergues or, um, you know, to use the showers, it, sometimes it's co-ed and it's, uh, uncomfortable sometimes. That's why that kind of um, scarf, that long scarf is nice. You can kind of cover yourself with your bags. So um, there's no place to hang things. Like you don't have shelving and um, you, you don't, it, sometimes you go into a shower stall and there's just the hose coming out. There's, you, you have your stuff and there's nothing too high, uh, hang it. And so maybe there's one little hook. So I had Deuter, this company gave me this sack, and this is really for garbage, to haul garbage out. But what it ended up being used for me was it's waterproof, real lightweight, and then it has a hook here. And so I could hook this around things when I was in the shower, and I could put my clothes in here and all my shampoos and things like that in here. And this was just really helpful. So I would suggest have something that you can bring in and hang in the bathroom because you're not always going to have shelving in there you know you're really just holding things and it's either on the floor or hopefully you can hang it on on something so I had a towel with me um, these are micro towels it's a dry light towel brand and it was wonderful it sucks all the water up and it drives really fast lightweight so I had that and in my little pack I had my shampoos um, at night I forgot to mention I I used these little uh, I don't know if you can see it but um, you know, earplugs are a must. Be even with that, you could hear the snores, but it w at least helps a little bit. 
Um, and one thing I would suggest, just a, just a suggestion, is instead of, um, instead of having a bottle of shampoo and it possibly leaking and carrying the whole thing all that way, think of going to your hairdresser. Uh, my hairdresser gifted me some of these. They're called Monet, and they were in little thin light packets, and uh, I had enough for the whole trek. And you know, just you use it and throw this away, and it's not messy, it's not anything. And so, I would suggest using these little samples if you can get a good one from your from your hairdresser. Um, I ended up using for my face. I ran out of my face little towelettes, and I ended up using you know just random little shampoo samples at some of the hostels that they had. And I also washed my clothes with that shampoo, and my skin ended up really getting dry. And I ended up getting this stuff called baby balm. It's green goo. Let's see if you can see that. But basically, it's it's just a real thick grease, almost like the the consistency of Vaseline. And I would put my hair up in a pigtail, take a shower, put my hair up, and then I would put that stuff on at night and in the morning. It, my skin felt great. So just an idea, you know, because you're not going to, it's not a glamorous thing we're going on, <laughs> you know. Um, I had, this is my sack that was all for foot care. And you are going to need a sack for foot care. I had, um, I had everything, little scissors, nail clippers. I had paper tape. I had uh, Compede, you'll get these over there. Uh, I have pain relievers. I had, I had these little tube things that go around your toe for their silicone on the inside. So you're gonna spend a little money at the pharmacy. It's gonna be one of your favorite places, but I had its own sack as my foot care. And you would tape your toes in the morning, you know, and just take care of them. Um, in this little, this little container, it's real lightweight, but I was able to see my, my toiletries, you know, my toothpaste and all the different things in here, and that was real easy and lightweight. So all of that went into my little green bag that I took into the bathroom. So the other really important thing is sandals because there's so many people from all around the world and they're walking barefoot on these, these floors, it's really important that you protect your feet from warts or dif different skin problems. And so just a lightweight, thin pair of thongs, flip-flops is all you need for the, the showers. And, and also if you wanna walk around in them. I saw people wearing a lot of Tevas, which I've never had, but they love these Tevas. They're supposed to be like a gel, kind of bottom here, and then the, um, the cloth here is real soft but very sturdy and hugs your foot. So check into Tevas as well. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was the, um, the technical stuff. I had planned on really shooting a lot. I took my iPhone, I edited at night when I was in bed. Um, I would just make a little eye movie with some of the footage that I did, and that's how I did my my whole trek across the country. Each night I would just, while I was in bed, I would put it together and just shoot it off. So what you have to keep in mind is oftentimes there's, well, there's always bunk beds in these albergues, and you don't always have power source by your head. And I needed power source in order to upload these. Uh, it took a long time to do it. And so um, I got, this is my, Oops, this is my little bag of goodies um, that I made. I sewed, I sewed these together, just little compartments, so that everything was in one, one area for my cables and batteries and things like that. So I debated on taking this. Uh, it is, I don't know, it's, it's a little over a pound. But the cool thing is, it was, it was well worth it for me. It has a real bright light here. Um, so if you go out in the morning or if you're, you know, you just need it, you've got a light there. It has two plug-ins. So if this, this battery can charge two phones six times without having to be recharged, it's amazing. And so I've helped friends, you know, when we're sitting at a cafe, their batteries are low. We can charge our phones, you know, if it gets low during the day. I've, many times I've helped people with it. And um, it's just a wonderful thing to have, you know. It saved me many times walking when my phone was low when there was no power at some of these albergues. There was no power, and so it was wonderful to have this. So I'll put the link to this on. It is heavy, it's substantial. It might not be something that you need, but for me, doing these, these uh, videos each night, this was the way that I was able to do it. So that was a wonderful thing.
Um, this is something that I thought I would use. I used it one time. I don't know. It's probably two and a half pounds. And uh, it was ridiculous. It's a really amazing, cool thing. It's a gimbal with axles. And uh, when you're walking, it's almost cinematic. It's very smooth and wonderful. Instead of jolting when you're walking, it changes it. But uh, I just couldn't bring it out, the case, you know, it was just such a hassle. I used it one time when I was in St. Jean, and after that, I just, I had it with me, but I never used it, so I wouldn't suggest this. I would suggest going light with it. Um, let's see what else I have in here. I did bring, <laughs> I brought these lenses for my iPhone. I had planned, you know, I'm a photographer, I wanted it to be beautiful, but, um, so I had these wonderful lenses. I had wide lens and fisheye and, macro, I never use them once, and they're quite heavy. Um, but anyways, I will use them now, but I had them in here, and I carried them, and it was a waste of space. You need a plug-in for power, and I chose one. They have, they have ones that are literally this small, that you know, just the tip, but um, I chose this one because you can help people. There's four plug-ins here, and when you get to the albergue, sometimes there's just a couple of plugs, and I was able to help people with that too. So it's a little bigger, but it's, what, an ounce or two bigger, so it's, it's well worth it too. Um, I brought kind of ridiculous things that I didn't need. This was something that was really cool that I think I, I used it a few times. It's a portable, foldable, a keypad and it's Bluetooth to your phone and so when I was uh, when I was uploading the videos and I wrote this is what I did it on and it's it's kind of nice I didn't always use it just another added thing that you don't need what else did I get just cables and things like that so I would suggest compartmentalize simplify I didn't need all of this like I said um, and then books I brought books. These, these I left at home, but you know, The Wise Pilgrim and City to City on the Camino. And then I brought this beautiful fat uh, history book that, that I carried up and over the Pyrenees wanting to use it. And I just, it was ridiculous. So I gifted a lot of things along the way and I mailed six pounds ahead. But I'll tell you, a lot of people use John Briarley's book. Um, I used it not not every single day, but it's how I made my plans because he has he has maps. I don't know if you can see that. He has the distance between the villages, and then you can time your day. And what I tried to do is uh, I didn't want to go on his stages exactly because a lot of people do that. And so sometimes I would stop before the final stop, and then I would go farther the next day into the middle of the next day on his on his stages and that way I was able to see really cool villages and stuff that that aren't really seen that you, you don't hear about too much so that was nice but um, anyways I think that I think that that might be that might be it one thing I do want to say is a friend of mine that I met along the way she's from Barcelona she had been to Finisterre before and if you guys are going, and you're going from Santiago on to Finisterre, let me tell you about a place that you can get sea glass. When you're there, there's a little, um, you know, that you're, you're going to go up to the lighthouse, and then you can walk down. I think it's about three miles down to the city, this little village. And you're going to find a boat dock, a boat harbor. Where the boat harbor is, there's a huge iron anchor that's all, you know, rusty. When you see that, go down the stairs and there's all of this broken glass and um, I don't know, it was like terracotta and pots and pottery that was washed up. Some of it is still pretty new and sharp, but if you dig in there, this is, this is, this is what I got after a few minutes. Look at that. Just beautiful blue, green sea foam. It was amazing. And that was just after a few minutes of looking. And also on the beaches, you know, um, there in Finisterre, that's where it all started. And there's beautiful shells that wash up. The Camino shell washes up. And you can grab a few of those. So I just wanted to tell you guys about that. If you are in Finisterre, go grab a handful of this beautiful sea glass and, um, enjoy that. But I think that that's all that I have, pro and con, what I would do and wouldn't do. 
But you know, everybody's Camino is different. Uh, everybody goes at different times and have d has different needs. So hopefully you gathered something positive from this, you know, one way or another. And uh, if you're going, my gosh, I hope you have the most beautiful Camino, go without expectations, pack super light, train ahead of time with your pack because that's gonna make a big difference on your feet. Your feet are everything, listen to your body. If you need to go slower, go slow. There is no race, you know. Um, but it's, it's the most beautiful experience I've had in my life so far. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'm going to post another video later about my walk through Santiago, which is my favorite city of all of the places that I went. It was so cool. And a little bit about the Parador Hotel, which is built in 1599. That was pretty awesome. So anyways, thank you and buen camino.